All right, so here we are. It's try number three because that time it was uh, Facebook, I believe. Uh, I haven't gone live on Facebook uh, natively on my page, and I think I hit the finish button when I meant to hit the uh, button to post a comment. So let me just type the comment in real quick about where you can vote for us uh, for South by Southwest, and then I will get back to the content related to uh, audio. And what I was saying is basically it's important to uh, listen in real time uh, through headphones, uh, through whatever the app is or service you're using uh, to go live. That's where you listen uh, rather than, say, listening. Hey, Brad, thanks for joining us. Rather than, say, listening through uh, Facebook Live, while you're on the air because that's going to be delayed. And so if you do that, then that's going to loop back through. It's going to throw you off and it's not going to make for a very pleasant broadcast. So uh, just, just remember that and uh, use headphones. Definitely. It's an extremely important part of going live or some type of uh, earbuds, like uh, what you'd have from your iPhone, iPad, iPod or Android device and welcome coach jenny we are back uh just going live natively on on facebook as uh be live tv uh just suddenly ended the broadcast so it wasn't a, a a case where i could just refresh and and get back on so in addition to headphones and monitoring your voice uh and monitoring in real time uh, the other thing to consider is to have some type of microphone. Yes, if you're broadcasting from a desktop, a laptop, there is usually a built-in microphone. You can go live uh, using your computers, your laptop's built-in microphone. You can go off also, if you're using an external webcam, that will have a mic uh, built in. You can go live using that. Uh, but I don't re recommend either one of those. At the least... Uh, use a lot of a lot of your headsets will have uh, something that you can talk into. Like if you're using earbuds from a mobile phone, that would be preferable to going live using just a built-in mic or a webcam mic. But in general, I I would say that one of the best ways to upgrade your audio is to get a microphone. And um, I use the Samsung Q2U. Uh, microphone. It's basically an entry-level dynamic microphone. It cost me, I think, $49. Um, it, it, now they may be about $75. Um, I love this microphone. Another one that's very popular is the ATR2100. Um, it's it's same price range, almost the same mic. I find this one a little bit uh, warmer, uh, a little bit more power, um, but the ATR2100 is hugely popular in the live stream community, and it's both of these microphones are great. And I, again, I call them entry level microphones that shouldn't be to uh, to, to consider them an insult uh, because this is what I use. And I, I've worked in radio and I've used uh, you know much more expensive microphones. And if you're just going in with a USB connection. Uh, first of all, you would need uh, some type of audio interface or mixer uh, with a USB output in order to use most other microphones. So uh, if you want to use a USB microphone, there's basically three choices, right, uh, if it's a dynamic. Let me, let me talk about dynamic versus condenser, and then I can put everything into, uh, into perspective. So um, most microphones, when you go buy a microphone, will fall into two categories, right? There are dynamic microphones and there are condenser microphones. Dynamic microphones are what are used in radio. They're excellent for podcasting. They're excellent for live streaming because they don't pick up a lot of noise away from the mic. So you won't get room noise, outside noise, to the extent that you would with a condenser mic. Condenser mics are much more sensitive. Um, I think it's unfortunate that condenser mics are being ma marketed so much towards the live streaming community uh, because um, 
they pick up too much noise. You're not in a studio that's treated for sound and everything else to where that would be ideal. And even in, even in radio, I never saw a condenser microphone. Every microphone we used in talk radio was a dynamic microphone because uh, you, ha you just have not the perfect environment, even with sound proofing and all that stuff. You, it's just not the perfect environment for uh, – for, for using a, a condenser microphone. So if you want a USB microphone, which uh, that's probably your starting point, right? And you want to get a dynamic microphone, which is what I highly advise, you're basically limited to three choices. There's the ATR2100, which is hugely popular. I believe it's in the $75 range. There's the Samson Q2U, which is what I'm using. Again, uh, in the $75 range. And then there's the Rode Podcaster, which um, $220, 230 240 something like that. I don't think it's necessary to get that. I don't think you need to spend that extra money. Uh, and that's a U I believe it's a USB only, whereas these mics, this uh, the Samson and the ATR, uh, come with cords both to plug in digitally, but they also come with the analog connection called an XLR connection. So if you do decide at a later point to get a mixer or an audio interface and want to plug in with an XLR connection, um, which gives you more ability to mix in uh, other voices and other music and things like that from a mixer, um, this gives you the opportunity to grow with it. Um, so I, I highly recommend these for broadcasting from, from your desktop. Um, they're, they're tremendous. Uh, if you go to live stream, let me, let me put this in the, in the chat. If you go to live stream, uh, universe, universe, I can spell universe.com, uh, slash resources, um, you'll see on the resources page uh, that uh, there's a, you'll see an image of a microphone, and I talk about all the dynamic microphones, both uh, the USB ones and also those that uh, only are analog, only connect with an XLR, which means, again, you would either need a mixer that has a USB connection to a computer, uh, which does that analog to digital conversion, or you would need an audio interface, which is a device specifically to take your analog audio and convert it to digital so that it can go into the computer. So that's, that's where we're at. I, I would recommend those, those, th those two microphones, really, the ATR2100 and the Samson Q2U. Um, there are also other great dynamic microphones out there. Uh, a lot of guys, a lot of people use the Heil PR40, um, that's big in the in, in a lot of tech broadcasters and online broadcasters use that. Uh, I, from what I can tell, it's got a great sound, um, but you're getting into not only a more expensive microphone, but uh, you're going to need a more expensive arm and 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 all sorts of different things to go with that. You're going to need a mixer or an interface, uh, but that's a great microphone. Uh, the Shure. I think it's, what is it, SM7B or something like that. It's a Shure microphone. Uh, Mike Unplug uses it. It's a great mic. Hey, Bobby Stamps, Carlos Phoenix, Michael A. Campbell. Thanks, everybody, for uh, joining us. Uh, Coach Jenny, Brad, uh, so great to see everybody. Uh, we're talking about getting your audio right, how somebody who's starting to live stream on, the, on behalf of their business or building their personal brand or just enjoys being a guest or hosting shows, what they can do to quickly upgrade their audio without spending a lot of money. And I, I've gone over the popular lower cost options like the ATR2100, the Samsung Q2U. Uh, and now I'm talking about if you want to spend more money. And depending on what your setup is, if your setup is very basic, and you know you're not you don't have a good audio interface or a good mixer and things like that. I don't think you're going to get three hundred dollars or four hundred dollars better sound because you spend that much more on a microphone plus the other things that go with it. Um, but if you do want to spend more, I would recommend that Shure mic. I would recommend uh, the Hi-O PR40, Electro Voice RE20. 
uh, Rode Procaster. Uh, those are some. Uh, Electra Voice has another mic that uh, will be on uh, the LivestreamUniverse.com slash resources page. Uh, that's a little cheaper than the RE20 and uh, seems to be a good microphone for live streaming as well. Now, here's the thing. In addition to the fact that it may not make that much difference if you spend more money than you would spend for an ATR2100 or a Samson Q2U, um, the other thing is spending more money doesn't mean that the microphone is better for you. And microphones are very individual to your voice and your style and all that. So um, if somebody puts out a, a you know, a list of uh, this is the best microphone to use and the second best or whatever. Now, it's it's a very individualized thing. You need to try it and see for yourself uh, what works well for you. So a couple other simple ways if you have a microphone. Uh, it's good to get a boom arm. I got this one from New Edge for, uh, I think, Newer. Newer was the company. Newer. Uh, I, I believe it was like $13 or $14. Um, you know, with a microphone like this, you really don't need to spend more on on an arm. If you have some of the other more expensive mics, you'll need to get a better arm. You'll need to get a shock mount and, and different things like that. But very inexpensive. Now, what is the advantage of using a boom arm? Uh, number one, it takes it off your desk, right? So you're not going to be knocking it over when you reach for a keyboard. But also, it's not going to pick up the sounds from the keyboard. It's not going to shake. Uh, you're not going to sit bent over uh, all all the time you're on the air. You can you can easily shift it to to make room and position it, and uh, it, there's very little handling noise. And if you use a shock mount, which I I don't have, then there'll e even be less uh, handling noise. Although in general, you don't want to really be handling the mic too much once you're live and you, you've set it up. The other thing I use is uh, a foam windscreen, and basically that that helps to some degree with your the popping of your peas, and <laughs> uh, it, it's not probably as good as, uh, you know, those pop filters that, that people use, um, but unless you have a microphone that has a pop filter that just sort of fits on the front, I, I think it's sort of unsightly when people have those huge pop filters that, I, I feel like the, the windscreen looks nicer. It kind of does the job. It also protects against a little extra background noise. Um, and I, I think this is like $3 to get one of these. So so that's basically it. it you you want to get it off your desktop so it's not picking up uh, your, your keyboard. It's not picking up when you move things around. Uh, you're not knocking it over. and You're not sitting hunched over, uh, basically killing yourself <laughs> if you're on for a long time. Uh, the other thing is you want to you wanna angle it a little bit, right? And you want to keep it close. If you're using a dynamic mic, you want to keep it close. One of the biggest things that I see people do wrong in live streaming is they don't like the idea of the mic being on because they're on video, and usually when you see people broadcasting on TV or whatever, they don't have a radio mic sitting in front of their face. But they're in a studio with boom mics, and they have a lapel mic and all that stuff, and they're in, a, in an environment that's really treated and conducive to getting great sound without using a mic like this. If you're broadcasting from home, you could use a lapel mic, or you're broadcasting from your office or your home studio, you could use a lapel mic, you could use a, a boom mic or whatever, but you're going to get your best sound in those circumstances using a dynamic uh, mic like like uh, I mentioned. And so um, if you angle it slightly to where it's picking up your voice, but you're not popping your peas right into it they're kind of going a little bit a little bit forward right so they're picking it up at an angle but you're close not you know not less than 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 a fist length away from uh the microphone and the error that i'm seeing too many people make is they want the microphone out of the shot right they, they don't want the microphone in the shot because they don't want they don't like the visual of that right but obviously you can tell the huge difference that it makes uh, when you're close to a dynamic microphone versus when it's out of the shot. And one of the things, the other things people often do is they get a condenser microphone because they feel like that'll pick up from a distance, right? And they can put that out of the shot. 
The problem with the condenser microphone is that while it does pick up your voice from a little more distance from the microphone, it's also going to pick up your keyboard. It's going to pick up uh, if you move in your chair. It's going to pick up a lot of things. And when you hear somebody pounding away on their keyboard and it, it really sounds loud, uh, chances are they've got a condenser microphone sitting right on, on their desk. So uh, I, all things considered, I go with the dynamic microphone and I keep it fairly close to myself. So those are our basic uh, tips for audio. I don't know if anybody has any questions. If you do, please feel free to throw them in the chat. Hey, Brad, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Brad Friedman uses the Heil PR40 microphone, and he gets a terrific sound out of that. Todd, uh, Todd Bergen uses the Heil PR40. Uh, Jeff Adams uses it. Stephen Haywood. Uh, a lot of people are using that. Um, I never saw it when I worked in radio, but now I'm starting to see. I saw a satellite radio show. They were using the high LPR 40. So uh, it seems to be a popular uh, popular microphone these days, and it's at a little lower price point. Uh, Carlos, what do you use? Uh, Carlos Phoenix says he doesn't use a mixer much now, but it's a great suggestion. Uh, a, a mixer is uh, a mixer is necessary if you want to bring in a bunch of different elements of audio, right? So if you want to mix in music and you're not doing it digitally from your computer, but you want to attach, uh, you know, a music option that go through the mixer, you want to adjust the easily adjust the audio uh, levels of your music and yourself. And if you have a guest in studio or next to you or whatever, there's a bunch of different reasons for using a mixer. With many of the microphones other than the, than, than the USB microphones, if you don't have a USB microphone, basically you have an analog microphone. And so another reason people get mixers is because some of the mixers have a USB output, meaning that they convert your analog audio through that microphone. In the mixer, they're converting it to digital. Uh, and also people use audio interfaces, which do a great job as well of, of uh, converting uh, your analog audio to digital at, at a high quality. Uh, John Piper asks, can you post the link uh, to order the boom arm? Uh, let me put a link, uh, live stream universe. I, I don't have the, uh, like the order, the, the, the direct link, but let me put live stream universe.com slash resources into the chat. Uh, look for the picture of the microphone on that page, and I do believe there should be a link to uh, the boom arm there. Uh, so check that out, and I'll just take a look real quick. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it says uh, you, you go down to where it says Samsung Q2U microphone, and uh, these are all Amazon links, so I would get a little bit of commission if you buy. I just want a full disclosure, but uh, really uh, just sharing it because that's where I know it is. And so uh, I, I mentioned it the, in the last sentence under Samson Q, Q, Q2U microphone, get an inexpensive boom arm. If you click inexpensive boom arm, that'll take you to the boom arm I have and foam windscreen, which will take you to the windscreen that I have and get ready to sound like a pro. So uh, just just to just to recap, um, just to recap quickly, uh, which browser am I in? Okay, just to recap quickly, uh, get yourself some type of headset. Use your iPhone, uh, you know, your iPhone earbuds, something so that you're monitoring both your own voice in real time, and you're monitoring. Uh, your guest or the person interviewing you, your co-host, whatever other audio is going in real time. Do not listen off of Facebook Live because there's going to be a huge delay and it's going to mess you up. It's going to loop back in through your microphone and it's going to go out over the air and it's just not going to be uh, a, pleasant, a pleasant listen. So uh, any other tabs you have open, uh, first of all, you should close as many tabs on your, 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 uh, your web browser as possible, right? But uh, any additional tabs other than if you're using a platform or whatever where you're listening 
uh, in real time, you should cl you should mute those tabs so that that audio doesn't impact. Uh, Brad Friedman asks uh, Ross, do you record audio separate from video? I I don't right now. I, I think it could be a good idea, particularly if you want to make a podcast out of it. Um, there's also other options like. If I record, if I use Wirecast, I can record both the audio and video in Wirecast, and the audio is real good quality, and then I can just split that. Uh, but for right now, uh, I'm just whatever recording uh, Facebook Live is making from this is uh, what I get, and I could download it and rip the audio if I wanted to. Uh, some people also record into a like in a digital audio recorder, like a Zoom or a Roland or whatever, which is also a good way because then you have your, your audio just ready if you want to make a podcast out of it. Um, so whether you record into something like Wirecast or you record into – uh, you know, OBS or, or a digital audio recorder. Those are all ways to get good quality audio that, that you can use. Uh, Carlos Phoenix says, my iPhone headset is what he's been using recently. Uh, Brad says he does love the uh, Heil PR40. Uh, let's see what other comments. Uh, John, if you're still here, John Piper, uh, I did put the link in. Uh, and so... Bobby Stamp says he uses the Behringer 503 mixer. Love what it sounds like for me. I'll have to check that one out. Uh, I don't know the uh, the Behringer numbers, what that relates to as far as uh, as far as um, what what type of uh, mixer it is. Uh, if you're still here, Bobby, does that use uh, does that does that convert uh, analog to digital? Does that take a like an analog microphone and Convert it into a digital signal. Does it plug in your, your mixer plug right in with USB? Uh, that would be interesting to know. Uh, let's see what else. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. Um, again, if you haven't had a chance to do so, uh, check out uh, LivestreamUniverse.com slash SXSW to vote for us, myself, Coach Jenny, Monique Johnson, and Karen Graves. Uh, livestreamuniverse.com slash SXSW to vote for us for South by Southwest. Our panel proposal is Facebook Live, build your tribe, and actually make money. So we, we hope uh, we know a lot of you have already voted, but if you haven't, please do vote. Leave a comment in support. Uh, we really would appreciate it, and we hope we get to talk about all this good stuff at South by Southwest. So thanks, everybody, for joining. Uh, tomorrow, I believe, is Karen Graves. We'll have uh, some tips on uh, Facebook Live for Business and then Coach Jenny on Thursday, and then the four of us will get together on Friday and do a show at 10 a.m., I believe, all four of us, and you'll get to see what our chemistry is like and how uh, a little preview of what it would be like if we were doing a panel as well as we'll recap and discuss some of the issues we, we went over during the week. So uh, that's it again, livestreamuniverse.com slash SXSW. Please do vote and have a great day, everybody. And if you have any questions or, or follow up regarding audio, of course, feel free to message me uh, in Facebook or uh, on Twitter, wherever, and I will do my best to get back to you. So thanks and, and have a great day, everybody.